Now for all of you that are out there listening, I need you just to close your eyes. And I need you to think about your personal relationship with the Father right now. How good he's been. And family, let's just give God praise. It's time to worship. Oh, lift up, lift up holy hands. All your bits. I've known them all my life. She invited me to come down and preach one Sunday. When her oldest daughter came from college, I didn't understand why at the time. I didn't know she was setting me up. My birth mom raised me the first 17 years. And then for the last 33 years, I was being raised by my other mom. My birth mom would teach me and enforce it with switches. Uh, you children ask grandma what switches are when you get back home. But my other mom would teach me and then she would reinforce it by saying, I'm just trying to help you get to heaven. So how could you argue with that? We took many trips together. We went to lectureships. We went to gospel meetings and we would leave, share at home and everybody else home. We just go and have a good time and, you know, I'm trying to get there fast. And she said, it don't matter if the man ain't looking. God is still looking. Signs say 55. I said, Mom, take a nap. She said, Look, God's still going to be looking. <laughs> she was a good mother-in-law. She wouldn't get in your business. She wouldn't get in your business. Unless you invited her in your business. And I, I, I love that about her. We just enjoyed one another. Seemed like I enjoyed her more than... <laughs> But she was a good mother-in-law. You couldn't help but love her. My father was a strict father. He always taught us to obey the older ones. And we did. And if we didn't, we got a whipping from the older ones. And when the parents got home, we got another. And I don't remember too much about she and Brother Roundtree meeting. I was quite small, and I do remember the night they got married. And I cried when he took her from home. And they lived a life. Then came the limo. We named, and my baby sister we named. Before uh, we named Elmo, we named, James came along. Now she was pregnant for the nine months practically before she knew she was pregnant. And we named James Walnut, and we named Elmo Zagnut. So then she was, a, she was baptized, I've forgotten under whom, I was too small to remember, but she started teaching the family the way. And my mother was easy to teach and talk to, but my father, uh -uh. she went to pick, my father had a little truck, and he went downtown. They were living down, down well, Dawson then. He went downtown to pick she and Elmo up. Elmo was the only one then. And she started t teaching my father about the church. It was good until she taught him if he didn't obey where he was going. And she knew, she used the H word. And he stopped that truck. He said, I've never heard of any of my children say anything like that to me. And don't you ever, ever, as long as you live, say another thing like that to me and even to church. And 
that was one heartache she never got over because any of us would, could never talk to my father again about the church. I don't even know if he heard the gospel, but that was a heartache to her for the rest of her life. And as far as the church, Elmo began, I called her husband Elmo. He began preaching. He went to Nashville, came back to this little church across town. And it was, it was some hard days. But finally, Brother Keeble, or some, or placed him in Athens, Alabama. And finally she sent for me. And I, I thought I was going to a big city. I was leaving Valdosta, I thought I was going someplace. And when I got in Athens, Alabama, I said, oh, they had a little house on the prairie in the back. I said, I thought I'd left all of this. But anyway, I went to school for half a semester there with them, and I had to go back to Valdosta. But those were some hard days, I know, for them. They picked cotton, and in Alabama, they didn't have a small sack like we did. They had a 10-footer. And how they drug those sacks, Brother Roundtree, oh, the first time I called him Brother Roundtree. <laughs> oh, he picked, he picked, he, he was just a hard-working man. And then at noontime, he would go to the city square with this bullhorn. He'd agitate those people. Oh, he agitated them so about the church. But it's, he made success with that. And we got to meet a lot of people, the Malones, the Freemans, and, and the Murrays, and oh, so many people. But uh, then she moved to Bradenton. And then I had gone to Cleveland, Ohio, and we didn't see each other that too much. But what I was going to say is that we had to obey her, mind her, and she was not only a sister, she was like a mother. And we just had to take her word, and it, nothing hard about it. And as far as that cooking, I was there when she couldn't cook, and I was there when she could cook. <laughs> And it was, it was just, I, I just can't explain in details of everything. But uh, it was just a pleasure. Then she got ill this year, and I had to come and stay with her a while and in and out. And um, she would call, and she, her grandson would come down. She said, Caleb, come here. I said, what do you want with him? I want him to do such and such a thing. I said, well, I'm here. I'm saving you. I don't want you to work you. I said, I came to help. That was my job. That's me. No, in time, Caleb would do the job. He'd go back and sit down. Caleb. I said, we, you go back to 75. I said, I'm driven on 75. Anyway, Pie showed me the way to get to 75. So just before we got to 75, she says, pull over. I'll drive. I said, no. Mm -mm. And that's the first time I've ever disobeyed her, not, you know. And so when we got to Bradenton, went to her house, I had to pick up a package and take it to Pies. <clears throat> so when I got to Pies, she got out of the car. And I said, oh, you're getting out of the car? She said, yes. And you'll get out too. I said, okay. So I get out. She's walking behind the car. So uh, I went inside. She says, no, I'm going to drive. I uh, said, so, oh, okay, this is your car, these are your keys, here. So I think that's the last time driving the car. And it was just then, uh, Brother Weijan came over later, the minister here. He says, uh, I told him about it. He said, and you let her drive? I said, yes, this is her car. I said, I've never disobeyed her, and I wasn't thinking I would disobey her then. I said, I let her drive. He said, boy, you all are some sisters. I've never <laughs> met sisters like you two. But anyway, that is part of the times we had. We had good times, bad times, and sad times. But they're all, in all, they were good. And it was just a pleasure to be, to God let me come down to serve her. Because she had served and nursed me and did everything for me that was possible. And I'll always be grateful to the three nurses they were here 
24 hours a day. I just, I've never seen anybody so dedicated. And I thank you. And one day if I live the life that she lived, we will meet again. I know we will. Thank you. About my Aunt Melissa. That's what we call her. I'm, the, I'm her old, I'm the oldest niece of the, the Newton family. And I think I was about four years old when she and Uncle Elmo got married. And I would meet her sister, we was just like sisters, Bernice. And we just didn't like him for marrying and taking Aunt Melissa away and her sister away from us. And through the years as we grew up, they moved downtown, that daughter. And the first time I had ever heard about the Church of Christ, she would come and go to, to, to our house, which was her brother, and she would tell us about this church and about the Lord. And this, and I was a little, little talk, four, five, six, or seven years old, like that, but I, I would listen and I'd say, well, now, what is the Church of Christ? And don't care who she meet, black or white, she, had, she would tell them about Christ and about the church. And she had a sweet way of doing it. She was so humble and sweet. And I love her. I love her. And so uh, my dad never did obey the gospel, but my mother did. And as I grew up, I went, I didn't obey the gospel, but I kept saying, what is this church? And I would go to church with her, and she, they would preach, and, I, and what some of the preaching, the gospel, would stick in your mind. You, if you hear the gospel once, you you remember, and it ain't going to leave you. And I went through life, got married, married her by the way. So I went to looking over my life. I said, I got to get in the church. And my husband, I tried to talk to him, and I couldn't tell him about the church. And she would come to see me, see us when she would come home. And I still was stuck in my mind, I want to obey the gospel and be like Aunt Melissa was. And my friends would take me to the, to the church, or whatever church you call it. And I would say, they'd say, oh, I brought my friend with me. And they'd say, well, where you go to church at? I say, I belong to the Church of Christ. Lord, forgive me for lying. I say, I belong to the Church of Christ. You know, I had never, had never been in the water, but that's what I would tell everybody. Come go with me to the Church of Christ, because she had taught me that. And when I, when I finally got married and had of all, just about all my children, I went to saying, Lord, let me go and get baptized. And I went, and all my children followed behind. To what a preacher's wife and an everyday Christian woman should be. There was never a time that her house was not open to strangers and friends and relatives to feed, clothe, house, and do anything else that she could for them. She loved the children deeply worked hard because the preacher's pay at that time for Brother Elmo was not sufficient to support the family. And therefore, she had to work as the preacher's pay and old 97 and Watkins products. Tell it, tell it, don't uh, and, and so I know they really missed him and this is what made the family. And, and she loved them and took good care of them and all of them a testament to what good mothers and fathers do for children. There will be no other Sister Roundtree, and we're just grateful for her. She was a great encourager, and I remember even as a little uh, fella, I just remember Sister Roundtree, and she always, always smiled and always had a word of encouragement. I remember two years ago, I did a gospel meeting uh, with Kenny Jackson there at the Palmetto uh, Church, and I remember she came there, she was there every night, and I remember she just encouraged Every night she was encouraging me. Every night she was encouraging me. And I remember she invited me over to her home and we had dinner there on that particular one of the nights. And it was just a great fellowship uh, that we had. And I really appreciate so much uh, Sister Roundtree and the great love uh, that she had for other people and the great love she had for the Lord. Her daughter asked me because I've been known as ABC preacher. She asked, uh, could I put together ABC? I said, oh, yes, I can. I, I believe I believe I can. A. Although things were not perfect, B, because of trial and pain, C, she continued in thanksgiving, D, she didn't begin to blame, E, even though times were tough, F, in her life, fierce winds did blow. But she recognized, G, God is forever able, H, she held on to what she knew. 
I, she couldn't imagine life without his love because J, joy will cease to be K. She kept thanking God for all things that L, love, imparts to thee. M, she moved out of the camp of complaining. She recognized N, no weapon that is known. O, on earth can yield the power P that praise can do alone. So Q, she quit worrying about tomorrow. R, she redeemed the time she had at hand. S, she started every day, I believe, with thanksgiving. Because T, to thank God, is a command. You, until she recognized he called her. Uh, it's from labor uh, to her reward. And my friend V, and she was victorious in the things that she did, looking for the Lord to come back for her again. W, uh, we must all run our race with patience. X, we must exalt him on high. Because Y, yes, she had good days and she had bad. But Z, thank God, Zion is waiting. Well, we're going to see our Lord and Sister Roundtree by and by. God in heaven, the God of all good and perfect gift. Once again, we, your most humble servants, stand before you this moment in a word of prayer. We stand before you, humble hearts and bowed heads, thanking you for our lying down last night. We lie when we lie down, the day when not necessary to promise to us, but by you being the God that you am, with all power of heaven that in your own hand, so soul get angry, so filled in your holy mercy. As you woke us up this morning with the finger of love and stand to tread our lives, might stay here while alone on the top side that does the earth. Our Father in heaven, we come to thanking you for loving us and giving your son Jesus. Amen. Thank him for coming to this world, suffering and dying on Calvary Cross, because all men have a right to eternal life. We thank you, our Father, for the church that he built here on this earth, because our Father, we were lost, we were like sheep going astray. 
but you loved us and gave your son Jesus so he came and built his church on the top side that does the earth. We come praying for the bereaved family, Father. We know they are lost the one that they love. We understand my own must go that way one day because Jesus said he was coming back. He's coming back for the church, and also we must rise on that water and grave, bear before him, and give him that kind of stewardship on this earth, the thing which we said and the thing which we have done. And Father, we're going to miss Sister Round Tree, yes, yes. and we pray for her family, yes, her children, our children, Father, let them understand that they hang on to the rope and not give our rope, give our tie, not in the hang there anyway, because Jesus is coming back again. When you come back again, and not come in the build of church, you're coming after yes. those who have worship him and speak when they're yeah, true. Right. We come after those of a father who will obey the gospel for people that you call them yeah. for labor to reward. If there's one here this evening, so I pray and I hope for heaven, please that every dedicated member of the Church of Christ, yeah. that there too will come and obey the gospel of yeah. Christ. Yeah. And when Jesus called them labor to reward, he can go back with them in the day of judgment. We come praying, our Father, for elders and preachers who stood here before me, our Father. We ask you to bless them and their family. Keep them in your care, our Father, that they may continue to fight the good fight of faith that they might lay hold on eternal life. We come, our Father, praying for my family. I come praying for my wife, Father, who now with a bit of affliction. She's in a nursing home, Father, she had a stroke. She's not only there by herself, but many more is there. And God knows who they are, who they are, because in the old things, Things. He sees old things, he hears old things, and nothing that his eyes can penetrate and find beneath this dust to earth. And Father, heaven, we just thank him for his grace, mercy, and kindness. Then, Father, when we're going the last mile away, yeah. we can't come together anymore. We can't come together with our brothers, our sisters, and open the book to call the Bible. We can't come together and praise his name and give thanks unto him. But when this body going back to the dust of earth, this people turn to God that gave us. In the day of judgment, we shall pay before the judgment seat of Christ, given the card of still ship on the earth, and they were done to the physical body. It is our prayer we can hear you saying, Well done, a good and faithful servant. Yeah. You have been faithful over a few things, I make it rule over many. Come on up a little higher. The blessing they were asked to give in the name of Jesus, we pray. If all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.